So I was determined next day I was going to go to church. I love church. And I woke up and I had hives all over my body. <laughs> uh, and i like, I can't go. And then I'm like, no, this is the enemy. Like, I've, I know enough that this is the enemy. So I watched on my computer in bed and I was like, nope, sold out. This is it. Um, started my life that day and the rest was history. In bed yep. with hives. Yes. If a guy is pressuring you, they're probably not the right guy for you. Mm. Um, and if your identity is in Jesus, it's okay to let them go. Um, like if they're not going to quote unquote love you because you're quote unquote not outputting, um, then it's not worth it. Yeah. Like life in Jesus is so much more worth it. So good. I love that you're seeing where you were. And it's just so, oh, yeah. it's so, what it is is refreshing because if God can take and unwind all that junk, mm -hmm. right? And then just give you a new frame of reference that says in Ezekiel 26, 36, that he takes out our stony, stubborn heart and he puts in a new tender heart, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, when when you you know came to know the Lord and when you're on this side of that conversation you're laughing at you, I I see you laughing at yourself yeah. like I can't <laughs> believe I believe the things I believe. Wow, we're so thankful for you to be here. The Love Church Story Podcast. We're here today with Megan Carlson. I'm super excited to have you. I love what you're doing at Love Church. Can you tell the audience just a little bit about what you do? Yeah, I'm the assistant Love Kids director. And so I really partner with Maddie in our Love Kids area um, with children's ministry. And it's I a love joy. it. I love it. So is that all the ages? What are the ages of kids yeah. in ministry? Um, birth through fifth grade, particularly in Love Kids. What's your favorite? We won't tell anyone. Babies, because I have one. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We're going to kick it off with a little bit of prayer, and we'll hop right into your story. Give God glory. Sound good? Okay. Father, we're so thankful that you are always at work in every single heart that you've created. And so today, God, we ask that you would just reveal through Megan's story something about yourself, that you would show up and allow us to see your hand but also that she would just have, I just feel like she's going to have an aha moment of how good you've been in her life. In your name, Jesus, amen. 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 Well, let's get started with a little bit about how Megan was raised, where Megan was raised, what her faith background looked like, and tell us a little bit about um, just up until you said yes to Jesus, what that was like in the way of faith. Yeah. So I grew up in Fremont, Nebraska with my mom and dad, then a younger brother. We're 18 months apart, so we're pretty close in age. Um and we grew up like we'd go to church mainly on the holidays. Um, and if we did go to church during on like not on a holiday, we sat in the back row. We checked the box. I didn't really see anything modeled in the home. It was mainly, basically just in the church and stuff like that. Um, I did have examples like my grandparents um, on both sides of my family, really. My mom's parents um, were Catholic. Um, and so I saw my grandma model that. And then I also saw my dad's dad um, model prayer. And then also his Bible was used. Like he was mm. getting in his word. And I didn't know what that really looked like or meant at the time. But now looking back, I can see God's goodness over Tell that. us more about that. Like what did you see or how did you know that? Yeah, just like the way he prayed, he presented himself. And he was always like dropping nuggets, right? Like he was always planting seeds in our grandkids. Um, like down to prayer or like... He would like call us higher in areas of life that I'm like, yeah, grandpa, you could just stop talking now. That'd be fine. Um, <laughs> but like truly, he just wanted God's best for our life. And at the time, I didn't know what that looked like. Um, but now and then also something crazy is my dad lost his mom when he was 16. So it's his stepmom. And they always said they were one with each other. Um, and they'd always do things together, like never separate. Like they were a package deal. Right. And we thought they drank the Kool-Aid. Like we thought they were crazy. But now like that I'm married and like we have God at the center of our marriage. Like I see and I'm so thankful that they modeled you that noticed for us. That's biblical. Yeah, yeah exactly. Two becoming one. I love it. Yeah. That's so wild. So when you were raised, what I hear you saying is there was faith there. Yeah. But you didn't get to participate personally. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. And then when there was a moment in your life where you that changed for you, tell us a little bit about how that happened and who was in your life and what the Lord did. Yeah. So I was in a sorority at Midland. Um, and my sorority mom, Emma, she invited me to Love Church. <laughs> I love that you're calling your mom. How much older is she than you? Um, she's actually younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> She'll love this. Yes. Um, and so she invited me to Love Church. And I was like, yes, I'm going. Like, this is what I've been longing for. Like, I kept searching and searching. And I was like, I knew I needed to use my life. I just didn't know how. Yeah. Like, I didn't know what the process looked you? like. Um, 21. Okay. Yep. I just turned 21. So what happened? Yeah. So I was determined next day I was going to go to church. I love church. And I woke up and I had hives all over my body. <laughs> uh, and I like, I can't go. 
And then I'm like, no, this is the enemy. Like, I've, I know enough that this is the enemy. So I watched on my computer in bed and I was like, nope, sold out. This is it. Um, surrounded my life that day and the rest is history. In bed yes. with hives. Yes. <laughs> okay, I just need to know, were the hives instantly healed? They weren't. <laughs> unfortunately well thank you that's so cool like that you were determined in those moments I'm curious was it because of the seeds that were planted throughout your life or do you feel like the people you were around in at your in your sorority what, what why were you so determined yeah I think there were seeds planted and I knew there was more I just didn't have it modeled for me and then really Emma like coming alongside me and being like right like we're called to be in community and so she came alongside me in that season and modeled what it looked like for I me. love that and she's a go-getter. I totally get it. Oh, yeah, she that. is. She, and, won't, she won't let you slack. No, no, she won't. No. <laughs> I Even like it. in a sorority where it can be so toxic and stuff, like she was really like that foundation in our sorority to mm. like keep our eyes pointed to Jesus and stuff where Amazing. it could be really icky moments. So Yeah, like a little bit too much flesh, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Tell us, okay, so you... You told me immediately, as soon as you saw what God was inviting you into, you got plugged in right away. Yeah. Okay, so first, what were you going to Midland for? What, why are you at school there? What were, you, what were your goals at that point? Yeah. And then how did that shift a little bit as you got plugged in? Yeah, I was going to school for special education um, at Midland. And then, what was the other question? Sorry. <laughs> so then you, you, got, you started coming to Love Church. Oh, and then what yeah. happened? Yeah, so then I got plugged into a small group, women's small group. And then I also got plugged in to Love Kids. Okay, now I'm curious. How long did it take you to do those two things? So you're watching online from your bed. How long did it take you to get plugged in? Then next Sunday I came in person and I think it was like that day, honestly, that I filled up the new year form. I remember like being on a face to face with April Jackson in like our student center at Midland, all the rowdy football players are around and like trying to have a conversation with April Jackson <sighs> on the phone about what life looked like and stuff. Love it. So you had your face to face, you got mm -hmm. plugged in right away. Yeah. And then was it kids right away or somewhere else? Yeah, it was kids right away. And then so I... So what did you do first? Because you weren't directing right away. So what did you do first? Yeah, I served in the kindergarten and first grade classroom. And then there was a first grader. I think he was first grade at the time. Um, just needed some extra love. And I just felt like the Lord yes. was pulling me to that. Like, what can I do more? And I remember having a conversation with P. Ben, actually. Like, what can I do? How can I help him more? Like, the Lord's telling me. I'm assuming I'm hearing him. What do I do with this? Um, He's like... Funny you say that. We're actually trying to launch a care team. Yeah. Um, Explain so, what that is. Um, yeah. So it's like basically helping those kids that need extra love, whether it's they're on the autism spectrum or it was just a rough morning. They need some love, like just helping those kids and meet them right where they're at. Um, and so. And each, every parent says, yes. Yeah. Like we don't want to turn them away. Right. Like mom and dad should have a distraction free encounter. So let's love your kids well. Come on. Um, and so I was like, yes, I need that. Let mm -hmm. me. Tell me all about it. And so then from that journey, I was on care team. Um, and then the Lord called me into children's ministry. I'm like, that's so funny. Like, he's so crazy. Like, I want to be a teacher, like, playing school with imaginary kids in my bedroom <laughs> as a little kid. My mom always tells me that I would, like, grade their papers, like, wrong, like, F. Like, I just like to mark answers wrong, which is not how I am now. But um, <laughs> so I did We're going to ask your husband. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> he might have a different answer. Um, but then we... So I would do that as a kid, like wanting to be a teacher. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to be a teacher. And I kept coming back to it. And it was just like the Lord pulling me back. Like that is my purpose, mm. is kids. Wow. And so like right now my assignment is children's ministry at Love Church. Let's go. So you knew your calling was to pour into children. Yeah. And then your assignment. Yeah. It kids. shifts. Yeah. I love it. So from the time that you said yes to Jesus on your bed all the way through to the assignment, how long was that? The reason I'm asking is because I'm trying to show people how fast God moves sometimes. Yeah. So in 2021 is when I surrendered and I was on staff a year ago. So 2023. So okay. within two years, right? And you were serving kids quicker than that. I love it. Yeah. It's so, so, so fun. Um, tell us a little bit about some pivotal moments in your walk, whether you were younger or older in your life at all. So some things that maybe you felt like the trajectory shift, you mentioned just there where you're going to be a teacher your whole life. Yeah. And then God said, no, you, yeah, kind of, you're kind of on track. Yeah. We're going to move it to kids ministry. It looks like this right now. Yeah. Okay. But then what, what else other pivotal moments in your life that you've had or experienced? Yeah, definitely. Um, like my brother and I would always compete for attention and love. I felt like. Um, and so that was a huge thing. So I felt like I needed to achieve greatness to be loved and seen. Um, and now I know like God's El Roy, like he sees us through everything. Um, but I didn't know that at the time. Right. And so I just thought that if I did good, got good grades, then I would be loved and seen. Mm. Um, and so people pleaser to the max in my life. 
Okay. Um, and then another key one is my dad, when I was in middle school, um, had like an emotional affair with another lady. Um, and so I saw that in my parents. God gets the glory like their marriage is great today now. Um, he has restored it. Um, but seeing my dad be able to do that to my mom made me believe that every man could do that to me. Mm. So it was a wall that I put up and sure. control thing. I needed to be... I needed your passwords to everything to ensure that you were not going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. um, and that carried out and through my relationships, even to my husband today. Um, I had to process it, obviously. Um, but now, like, we're obviously fine. But there's still moments that will come up where I'm like... Tested, yeah. Yes, like, yeah. who just texted you, you yeah. know? Yeah. So rewind a little bit, like, because well, you hit two pivotal moments. You yeah. skirted over one. We're going to hit one you spent a little bit more time on first, and we'll go back to the other one. Um, a little bit about this, quote unquote, emotional affair, mm -hmm. right? And so as a young child, how old did you say you were? In middle school. Okay. So in middle school, you see this something happen in the family where it creates in you, would you say fear? What would oh, you yeah. say? Fear. Okay. Yeah. Tell us a little more about that. Like, what, what did it make you feel like? Because clearly you had a response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it made me feel fearful, unknown, and hurt, like that someone could do something like that, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so when you say fearful, fearful of you being treated like like that? Or, yeah, okay. fearful of it happening to me, um, fearful of like if my dad could hide a secret like that, what other secrets are people hiding from me? Wow, okay, wow. So it's interesting, and now this is before Christ, so... Yeah you maybe like five or eight years before Christ, right? Mm -hmm. So before Christ, you have this foundation of I now, now we, we talk about these three lies that we kind of operate out of. And the one that we chatted about a little bit, you already hit people pleasing, but then also control, right? So it looks like things are out of control. It feels like things are out of control. So what can I do to control? And so your response was grab their phone and put a password on it that you know, so you yes. can check anytime. Yeah. It was question and challenge and like ask questions who are you talking to, right? Yes. Like that yeah. was the automatic response because mm -hmm. if you're not in control, someone can hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I think it's so crazy that you could have, that you figured that out, you know, because some people keep going in life like that and ne never get healed from something like that. So there had to be a point in your life where you were willing to take a look at that. Yeah. Fresh so, start. Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So tell us a little bit about what God revealed about who you are in that process and what you can count on instead of a password. Yeah, well, one, he's all knowing, right? Like, if he knows, I don't need to know. Like, he's going to protect me. Um, Come he on. knows all things. Um, and also, I don't need to be seen by men and the boys. Like, yeah. he sees me. Um, and that's what matters. And my identity is in him and not in Come the on. boys. Yeah. Um, and if they want to hurt me or try to hurt me, then that's okay because my identity wasn't in them anyways. It was in Jesus. Let's and go. Jesus can't hurt me. Preach. She's so. preaching over here. <laughs> I love it. Say that last sentence again, because if your identity, say that again. Yeah. So if my identity is in boys, they can hurt me, right? But Jesus can't hurt me. And so if my identity is in him, I can't be hurt. It's interesting because we can say, I've been unpacking this a little bit because we're talking about faulty foundations a lot lately. And one of the things is we can know my identity. We, PT does this conference called ID and JC only. Well, I can know my identity it has to be in Christ, mm -hmm. but to actually feel it, operate in it, and have that experience is so very different. So I want you to share with us just a little bit, what are some key tools that you've learned to keep your identity in Him? What are some things that you feel like God's introduced you to, to not run back to old Megan before Christ and leaning on your method of protection? Yeah, so I'm still not perfect, still trying to figure it yeah, all yeah. out. But like being in my word daily, right? Like if I write His word on my heart, then that's what's gonna spew out of mm -hmm. me. Um, and being in constant prayer with him. And if I feel the enemy creeping in, like if I'm like, oh, who did, did just texted Sean? Like, then it's like, quick, no, like I'm rebuking you. Like, that's not the spirit of God. Um, and so get out, get out of my face, get out of my Come on. head and stuff. So. That's practice, right? That's yeah. practicing Christianity. It's funny because people say they're quote unquote, pra when you say you're practicing, it's, it feels like, well, this we've taken care of this. This should be gone, but we're human. Oh, yeah. And so it, what were you going to say? It comes oh, up. I was like, I feel like I've processed the same thing 50 times. And I'm like, Lord, when can I be done processing yes. this? Because it's exhausting. I know. Um, but it's so good. You learn something new every time. Every so. time. The cool thing about God is there's so many different layers to us that he's patient. 
Yeah. And he's like, okay, we got seven layers. We got 10 to go. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, he's so patient to let us take the time that we need yeah. in order to be as free as we want. And, and I love um, the thought of we can have as much of God as we want. I can keep in control and be Denise or Megan, yeah. or I can let go and trust him and just let things go his way, right? Yeah. It's so crazy. Okay, so anything more that you'd want to add about that specifically desire for control and maybe even how God freed you on this side of that? Because I'm not... Before Christ, and you were saying you're operating from fear and trying to control, what are some emotions that may have come along with those moments between you and whatever it was, the boyfriend, mm. the now husband? Like, what were some emotions that you had in those moments with people? Yeah, no, that's really big. That's God, you asked that because anxiety was huge. Okay. Like, really big. Like, I, like, I would get, yeah, just very anxious. I don't know how to explain it other than everything was like very high intensity, like anxious all the time kind of thing. And obviously much more peace now. I'm so glad you said, and, and so many of us don't realize that my desire for control is what's causing me anxiety, yeah. you know? And so we want to fix the environment and the mood, but really yeah. it's if we're willing to confess, there was a moment in your walk with Fresh Start and you realizing your desire for control, you realizing yeah. your part to play, yeah. that you had to identify some things about you uh -huh. that needed change. You hit on what God was doing, but what did mm -hmm. Megan also have to do? Yeah, it was being open and honest with Sean. Like, hey, this happened in my past. This is why I'm operating the way I'm operating. Like, I'm working on it. Like, please just be patient with me. Yeah. Um, and he still knows that today. Like, Sometimes I'll be like, oh, who are you texting? He's like, here, do you want to see? Like, just like open book, honesty right. kind of thing. He knows where it comes from and like that I've processed it and I'm probably going to continue to process it yeah. the rest of my life. But you had to be vulnerable. Oh, yeah. You and had like to, early on in the relationship. You had to take a mirror, though, and look in yourself. I mean, I look at, think, look at it and think of it like the Bible is a mirror. It reads us, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you're operating out of fear, fear of man, fear of what people will do to me, you had to be willing to recognize that. Oh my goodness, I'm operating out of fear. God, please forgive me. Yeah. Help me to walk with you. And so I just praise God that you were in that space of willingness to yield because then now at least you can grab tools where before, if you're not willing, you can't heal what you won't reveal. Yeah. Right? And so you were willing to go that place. Okay, there was another thing that was pivotal in your your thinking before Christ. And, and some of the things you mentioned were things with your brother. Mm -hmm. And he may or may not know, and it doesn't matter. He may or may <laughs> not have felt the same, but yeah. what was true to you was true to you. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people forget. Like your perception is your reality. And that's not always the case. Like I can have a sibling and their perception may be literally entirely different than mine. Yeah. And that's hard for people to settle with because I was there. That didn't, that's not how it happened, but it's how you felt. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that because I think some people can relate to this. Anybody with sibling, sibling rivalry, you mm. hear this all the time. Yeah. And maybe it wasn't extreme with you guys, but in your head, you had stuff going on. So touch on a couple of those things, touch on how you handed it over to the Lord and what God did or has done on this side of it. Yeah. So when we were little, little, we were like best friends, my mom and dad say, um, then middle school and high school, it was competing. I was competing for my parents' attention. Um, and if I didn't get good grades, then they weren't going to love me. And my parents, I don't think, ever told me, you have to get straight A's. Like, I don't think those words ever came out of their mouth, but in my mind, they sure did. Like, <laughs> in my mind, they told me straight A's or we're not going to love you. Um, and my brother was, like, athletic and all the things. So, like, he played football, wrestling, boxing, bull riding, like, every what? athletic thing you can think of. And I was just not that person. Like, blew my knee, trying to jump a hurdle in middle school track. Like, not athletic at, not athletic at all. Um, so I did academic it was my big thing um, to strive for their attention, their love. Um, it was just I had to be perfect mm. and be follow all the rules. And then I became rebellious and didn't follow any rules and was secretive about it all, which then made me more Ooh, this anxious. This is a good one. Yeah. You were secretive and it made you anxious. Yeah. Give us a little, come on, fill us in on some of the I'm secrets. Like, oh, do they know my secrets? Do they know that I snuck out last night? Do they know what I just did? Like all the things, right? Mm -hmm. Like your mind floods, vain imagination. Mm -hmm. It was a real thing. Um, and so I was secret. I was anxious because I didn't know if they knew what I was doing. I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I didn't want to tell them. Um, and there was actually one moment my dad knew that I was lying to him and he called me on the phone. And I just broke down crying like, you're right. I'm wrong. Please help me. I don't know what's going on. I'm spiraling. Um, and so. And you think it was all birthed out of some of this competition stuff? Oh, and yeah. Trying to be sure. approved. Yeah. Because he was like crazy party animal. My brother in my eyes. He was. I don't know if he was. Maybe. He, okay. Sorry. <laughs> and it, so like, and he, in my eyes, 
he still got all the love and attention, even though everything he was doing. He was wild. Yeah. And so if I could be wild too and be secretive about it, maybe they would love me more. So, but which is false. They love me no matter what. I love it. I love that you're seeing (laughs) where you were. And it's just so, it's so, what it is is refreshing because Mm -hmm. if God can take and unwind all that junk, Mm -hmm. right? And then just give you a new frame of reference. It says in Ezekiel 26, 36, that he takes out our stony, stubborn heart and he puts in a new tender heart, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, when when you you know came to know the Lord and when you're on this side of that conversation and you're laughing at you, I I see you laughing at yourself yeah. like I can't <laughs> believe I believe the things I believe yeah so now on this side of your you and your brother tell us a little bit about what God has revealed yeah we're like best friends now to this day um, we've definitely learned things like on our own and stuff um, but like revealing that he probably saw things different too when we were kids and we had different perspectives. He had his own sure. walk and stuff. And we both, I think, have had a changed life in Christ. Mm-hmm. And so that has also been refreshing, right? Like yeah. you're two different people. Now you're new made in Christ. So. I love that. You're um, chatting earlier about almost like a performance-driven mentality, like <laughs> competing, you, ca- you call it competing, but really like I need approval. Talk mm-hmm. a little bit about when you realized you didn't need approval from man, you know, now, yes, you want to be loved by your parents, mm-hmm. but you, you talked a little bit about this. Um, tell us a little bit more about what kind of relief or what it brought to you. Yeah. I feel like when I surrendered my life to Christ, then I realized I didn't have to be a people pleaser, but I still am a people pleaser. Like I'm going to be honest. Like there's yeah. some moments I catch myself trying to please man and it just doesn't work. Like, you're going to fall short, right? Sure. So. Sure. Um, yeah. And on this side, it's interesting too, because it's not like you want to be in, uh, it's funny, you don't want to be in rebellion to your parents or yeah. rude or disrespectful, but it's not like you have to, I get it. It's not like you have to do all these things in order to see, but you see yourself yeah. differently now. Oh, for yeah. sure. Tell us a little bit about that. So before you were seeing yourself, obviously in a certain way, maybe even making up a story, you said vain imagination, mm-hmm. making up a story about what your parents required of you. So yeah. now what? You're around your parents. Now what? Yeah. Our relationship is great today. Like they've restored their marriage, all the things. They're the best grandparents too. My daughter so and fun. my niece. Yeah. So fun. Um, our family is like happy. Like, yeah, I feel like I just like now I'm kind of reflected on that. Like When we were kids, I feel like I was anxious, like always on edge kind of thing. But now it's like peaceful. Like I love going to my parents' house Mm. and just sitting and being like, we don't even have to say a word, but it's just like calm to be around each other now. And like the fact my parents watch online every Sunday now, like they're changing too. And so it's just, it's like joyful to be around them. Yeah, I think of what, from the time you started sharing till now, it's like this gradual surrender for each person in the yeah. in the story. Mm-hmm. I love it. Okay, so you did mention about, um, you know, beginning to let go. You made this statement. I just want to make sure our listeners heard this. I don't have to worry about what boys think of me, mm-hmm. right? Like there was a moment in your life where you said the word when we were talking earlier, chasing boys was mm-hmm. a thing, being approved by boys was a thing. Yeah. Um, and then even you had a, a moment at Love Church where you went to an event and God did this thing in your heart. He shifted something. So tell yeah. us a little bit about from the chasing boys story to that moment and how God kind of shifted your thinking on things. Yeah. So I was chasing boys because I could get attention from them, right? Like if I did what they said, then they love me. And that made me feel good because my identity was in boys. Um, but I realized my identity needed to be in Jesus because otherwise you're literally going to keep like searching for more and more like that whole is only fit for Jesus. That's right. Um, and so I kept doing that and then um, broke up a relationship because I knew it wasn't, I didn't even, wasn't even surrendered at this time, but I knew it wasn't God's best for my life. Ended it, like was keep searching, found this guy, his name's Sean. <laughs> um, and I, he wasn't surrendered at the time. But I'm like, why are you like, Lord, I just surrendered my life to you. Like what's going on here kind of thing. Um, we were dating for a couple of months, went to Fire and Ice. We were not doing what it. What is that? What, I mean, no one knows what that is. Yeah. So Fire and Ice, it was like a marriage conference. Mm-hmm. Um, but we weren't doing it completely God's way. Like, if I'm going to be really vulnerable and honest with you. Um, and so f- at Fire and Ice, though, um, Sean and I both felt from the Lord in different occasions, the Lord speaking to us to get married. We were on our way back to Fremont after the conference. And I turned to him, like, crying. I'm like, I feel like God's telling us to get married And he started choking up and he's like, you felt that too? I didn't want to say anything because I thought you'd think I was crazy. 
Um, Because you'd only been together a few months. Yeah. Yeah. And then three months later, we got married at Love Church. I love it. God brought you into some lives of some people who were poured in your marriage. What what was what was that journey like? Yeah. So we got poured into by three really big. Can I name them? If you want to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, like the Kings, the Stephanies, and then Jim and Penny too. Um, they just poured into us, like walked around, like told us what it, God's design for marriage is. Like they mm. modeled it for us too, um, which is like huge key pivotal for Sean and I's marriage still today. Like we still talk about that. We just recently joined a marriage small group. So there's even more couples being surrounded. So like, what I hear you yeah. saying is you guys might be pouring into marriages soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just because we value it, right? Like yeah. it, when you do it God's way, it's so much sweeter. And when you don't, like it hurts. Yeah. Um, well, you even mentioned, and it's not even, and this isn't out of shame, so please don't take it this way, but you even mentioned a story about what was approved in your home as a kid yeah. or younger when you, maybe it was with Sean earlier. Yeah. Um, and maybe you just touch on that, like this was accepted and totally fine. And now they got introduced to these three couples that are telling you a totally different way. Yeah. So like Sean lived in Omaha at the time I lived in Fremont, both with our parents. Um, and so instead of him driving back at late at night, my parents said that he could just stay the night. And so he stayed the night at our house. And at the time, like I didn't understand, like from a little age, I was told sex before marriage is no. And I remember being challenged one time when someone asked me, why is it a no? No idea. Couldn't tell them. But now I know the why, right? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So when you have sex, like you become one and then you leave part of yourself with that person. That's right. Um, and so Sean and I both had sex before marriage with other people and with each other, if I'm going to be really honest with you. And so we're pretending as we're married couples, as a married couple, we're pretending that we're married. Mm. Um and so when we're acting like it, when we're not in God's best for our life. And so there's a lot of baggage that we had to unload yeah. early on in our relationship um, and wounds we had to heal. Yeah. Because of and that. God was so faithful to bring that many oh, people yeah. alongside you to just yeah. pour your heart out and allow him to do some of those healing things. Yeah. It's so sweet that he does that. And one of the things that I, I know that we forget when we're having sex before marriage is if we're not willing to be pure before marriage, what? makes us think we will yeah. after we yeah. get married, you know? And so just having that reminder, like, oh my goodness, like this is a practice. I'm practicing purity before marriage so that even after yeah. I'd be willing to maintain purity, you know? Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. I know that's a hard word to share with a bunch of people that you don't yeah. know, but just maybe to encourage someone who's stuck in that space of why, why does it matter? It does matter. Yeah. It does matter. And mm -hmm. God, and even, you know, we, we look at it as, you know, and the word declares it's fornication. And so being willing to identify what it is, call it out for what it is and seek out people that yeah. are going to pour truth into your life. You guys did that. And, and call us higher. Yes. But you had to be willing. Mm -hmm. And I know both of you were willing. So what a privilege, what an honor, and what a great start to your marriage. So yeah. praise God for your willingness. And I know um, on this side of it, you're, you're enjoying the fruit of that right now. So tell us, uh, we're just going to wrap up here with a few other questions. First, tell us right now, what are you most grateful for in your life? And before that, even you've been at Love Church for a while. We talk about experiencing God's best for your life, what it looks like to love God and love people. And then we always talk about the method, the five S's. Tell us a little bit about which one you feel most appreciative of now and then what you're most appreciative about God in this season for. Yeah, definitely surrounded um, our community. Like I just feel like in the last like month, like we've always been have we've always had community at Love Church, but within the last like month, it's like just like blossomed even more. And like I've desired for Sean to be in community. Yeah. Um, and so we're now in that marriage group together and he's being poured into by other godly men. And so like that's huge for our marriage. Um and then in this season right now, I'm thankful for Sarah. Like her testimony of life, we've had a whole year with her. Like the yes. doctors told us we couldn't get pregnant. Um ended up pregnant. Sarah being your daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Two months, we were pregnant for two months, didn't even know. And then we were pregnant and then had her 10 weeks early. Um, wow. And yeah, she's a healthy one-year-old now. Come on. Yeah. So much to celebrate. Yeah. God's so faithful. It's so hard to, um, I mean, when, when people are speaking something over you, it's so hard to go in the opposite spirit and oh, yeah. just believe God instead of man. So I'm just so thankful on this side of it. You're celebrating so much. Yeah. So awesome. All right. I would want to challenge you like, okay, there's going to be listeners that are here today and they might find themselves in a similar circumstance. I'm just going to go the premarital moment. Yeah. They might find themselves in a similar circumstance and believe that their decision to be with their quote unquote boyfriend or girlfriend before marriage, mm -hmm. uh, you and your experience on this side of it, what would you challenge the one or two people out there listening? Um, you know what? We don't care 
don't care what God's word says and we're just gonna do what we wanna do. I wanna ask you, this is gonna be hard because you're a girl. I'm gonna ask you to dress the man. What would oh, you say? Man. I know, okay. it's a little bit tricky. So how would you challenge the quote unquote guy, a man in the marriage? Yeah. Or not, I'm sorry, in the relationship. Yeah, well, first of all, I remember Will Stephanie told Sean that women find men of God so much more attractive and it's true. Like Sean reading his Bible, whole different meaning to me now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so one, don't don't follow God just to get women. That's not what I'm saying. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's kind of funny. Um, but he'll use anything. Yeah. <laughs> um so wait, what did he say? He challenged he challenged Sean what? That Will? um that women find men of God more attractive. Yeah. Um, is what he challenged Sean. Um, but I went like to for men to not pressure women if that makes I sense. I love it because yeah. um, I oftentimes like I feel like I wouldn't have done it if like the guys didn't pursue sure. first do you know what I mean sure um so just like knowing that God's calling you higher and to not pursue things um and it's worth the wait yeah what's interesting and difficult you know like that's the opposite of what the world would tell you mm -hmm. it's like get some that's literally yeah. what the world would tell you so being willing to become a man is really what I see it as like yeah. become a man and choose what the Lord would say and then just watch the fruit of what that looks like so yeah. good so so good so challenging okay so now let's address the woman in that circumstance, maybe they find themselves where you go back to Megan, younger Megan, yeah. and you were being quote unquote pressured. What would mm -hmm. you say to that woman who is maybe not in the Lord yet, or maybe they're just learning about what it looks like to stand fast in their feet in yeah. the Lord? How would you challenge that young woman in those moments that you would have found yourself in a few years back? Yeah. If a guy is pressuring you, they're probably not the right guy for you. Mm. Um, and if your identity is in Jesus, it's okay to let them go. Um, like if they're not going to quote unquote love you because you're quote unquote not outputting, um, then it's not worth it. Yeah. Like life when Jesus is so much more worth it. So good. So, so, so good. And it's so hard to believe when you're the one grasping for a tender touch mm -hmm. or love or whatever you want from that other yeah. person right then and there. But it, like you said earlier, there's nothing that can satiate like the Lord does. Yeah. Right. It's so hard to believe when you're not walking in it but yeah. we would just say i would say take that step of faith trust god and see yeah. what he's up to yeah so and good he's all roy he sees you that's right yeah. so 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 good and then on the on the flip side of that decision i'm gonna have you pray this is interesting i'm gonna have you pray usually i'm gonna end in prayer i'm gonna pray after you um but in that same vein i'm gonna have you pray over people that want to say yes to you but remember how you said sean said you were in the car you were on the way home mm -hmm. from that conference yeah and you were the one that stepped out and yeah. said something. And you and Sean said, I wanted to say that, but I felt like you would have thought I was crazy. Yeah. How many people do you think feel like that at times of that sweet conviction comes from the Lord, but there's just an unwillingness to step out out of fear of man, yeah. right? So I'm going to have you pray just a, just a minute or two that we would not be fearful of man, but we would step out A, in obedience and be willing. Yeah. And then B, that there would just be fruit from that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Sweet. Then I'll pray over you and we'll bounce. Perfect. Thank Sound you. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Lord, I just thank you for today, Lord. I pray for the individual listening, Lord, that needs to take a step of faith, Lord. I pray mm -hmm. that they would take that step of faith, Lord, that there wouldn't be fear of man, um, but that they would trust that if you're calling them into something that you've already prepared them for that, Lord, that you will give them the strength, Lord. It won't be in their strength, but it would be in your strength, Lord. Would they hear your voice, Lord, and just be quick to obedience, Lord? I pray for the fruit that would come for their obedience, Lord, um, because walking in your best for their life is going to bring so much fruit, Lord. Yes. And we're just believing that, Lord. Um, so I pray for steps of faith to be taken today, Lord. Yeah. Um, no fear of man, Lord, mm -hmm. um, but just rejoicing in your goodness, Lord, and that you love us and that you'll just continue um, to call us into new adventures, Lord, and that we don't have to be scared of it because you're with us along the journey, Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. We actually have touched on a couple faulty foundations today in your story. We talked about the faulty foundation of people pleasing. And so we would just want to challenge people to go in the opposite spirit of that and to trust God to rebuild the foundation of being approved by him and him alone. We also talked about like a desire for control, the lie or the fault. It's really a lie of control, right? Because yeah. no one's ever in control but God. Yeah. 
but that we would allow God to break up the faulty foundations that were lying and then allow him to lay the only foundation that's everlasting his. All right, Megan, would you have one last thing that you'd like to share with our listeners, maybe even share a verse with them about your story? Yeah, um, just that what the enemy meant for evil, God turns for good. Mm. Like Romans 28, 28 says that he turns all things good for those who are called according to his purpose and love him. Mm. So just believe it and walk in it. I love it. And in your story, you see that time and time again. Yeah. He's so faithful. We're God, he's trying to, the enemy's trying to stir up junk and God just comes right back. Yeah, for and sure. And says, oh, what you're mean in there? Mm-mm, not going to let it go. He's I love so it. We're thankful for the way that you um, you do the supernatural. All you asked for was a willing heart, and that's exactly what we saw, and you do the supernatural. And so I pray that she would continue steadfastly in you and for those out there that are, that are identifying with anything that she mentioned today, some struggles that she's had, and just desire to overcome, that you would supernaturally speak, they would step out, and that you would do it. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for taking some time to listen in on what God's been up to in Megan's story. We love you guys. Have an awesome day. We'll see you next time.